Are you sick and tired of cutting wood on the floor and hurting your back in the process? Are you having trouble gluing wood together without the proper tools or table? Are you unable to drill into your wood when your shoe just isn't good enough? Well, it sounds to me like you need a workbench. Yo, what's up? It's me, Dulex, and I'm back with a different type of video today. I'm in the shop because I needed to build a workbench because I was using my table saw on the floor for the last two months or so. And if you've ever done that before, you know that's pretty uncomfortable. You can get it done, but it sucks. So I decided to make this entire workbench. And I'm gonna show you guys how I did that in this video. Let's get to work. So the first step in making this workbench was setting up the design. I used SketchUp on my computer to design it and I'm gonna make this entire thing out of two by fours and three quarter inch plywood. The first thing I had to do once I had the design ready was to cut up these two by fours. So the next step after I got through cutting all those two by fours was to cut the plywood. So I'm gonna be using three quarter inch radiata pine plywood and I'm gonna be cutting it with my circular saw and the track attachment. Now obviously you see me cutting this plywood on the floor which is why I need to build this workbench. But for anyone out there who also needs to cut these huge sheets of plywood on the floor, a quick tip for you is to use some foam board insulation and put that on the ground first then put your plywood on top now what that does is it helps you to get a clean cut without it being uneven because the entire piece of plywood is supported by the foam board insulation and then you can see here that my track was not long enough to cut all the way through this plywood but if you're using a track like mine or even a straight edge with your circular saw you'll be able to cut most of the way through and then flip it to the other side to finish off the rest of the cut and if you line it up correctly and measure perfectly then you really shouldn't have any issues with the cut at all after i had all the pieces cut the next thing i had to do was assemble so the construction of this is basically just two platforms that are connected by vertical supports so in order to make the platforms, all I had to do was make the square frames and then attach the plywood straight on top. And I used two inch wood screws for all of this. See, this was supposed to line up right here. But for some reason, I made this platform really short. But the top piece is the right size. I think I forgot to put some pieces on here. But. Oh, 
don't think it matters though. It's still strong, so. Now this was a shop project and not any type of fancy furniture or anything like that so while I was building this I really didn't care where the screws were or if they were visible or anything like that as long as it was strong right however on the top of the workbench I really didn't want to have any exposed screw heads because I wanted it to be a smooth surface so that I could run the lumber through the table saw straight onto the pass through space cleanly. So I decided to use pocket holes on the top of the frame to drill in that top piece of plywood. Then I decided to put some caster wheels on the bottom of the workbench so that I'd be able to easily move it into the middle of the shop or over to the side when I was finished working with it to get it out of the way right before I test fit the table saw itself, which luckily fit perfectly. The last thing I had to do was just to sand the top of the workbench. I wasn't going to sand and paint the whole entire thing. That would just be overkill. It is just a shop project. So when I sanded the top, I went ahead and added three coats of some satin polyurethane to the top just to make sure it has that super smooth finish for when I'm running lumber through the table saw and also when I'm doing glue ups of panels if glue lands onto the table it'll be really easy to scrape it off with all that protection on top of the plywood. So this is the finished product of the work table. As you can see, it came out really well. I like that the way that I built this is the exact right height so that while you're running wood through the table saw, it just slides perfectly onto the table. And you don't have to worry about anything falling onto the ground. And as you can see, the caster wheels on this make it really easy. So when you move around the workshop, and I can just put this away when I'm done with it, get it completely out of the space so I can use it for other stuff. And then as you can see down here, this is enough space underneath for me to put a shop vac or a bag to catch all the sawdust that's coming out of here. Obviously, I got to do that later. And then I've got a ton of storage space under here for other tools. Though I don't have that many big tools, I got space right here. And then that's pretty much it. I mean, this came out great. Now I'll be a lot more streamlined for more projects in the future. So I'll be right back with more trailer build videos in the future. So make sure to stay tuned for that. See you guys later. And off and falling down. So I built this entire fucking. Never at ease, I don't know a limit. Chasing a dream, I don't know what sleepers. I got a queen, she lit me to eat it. She ripe like a peach and she snapped me to snip it. You whatever do for that link up in person. Text me to fall through a murder, she wrote it. Still live with courage, you're doing a service. Pull up to the crib, I'm equipped with the breast strokes. Cut throat from the low, low, when no love goes. Women buddy, buddy, like it's been 